Thank you, Jim. I'd like to give you a little bit of an architectural uh, lesson while you're here, because I recognize in this absolutely magnificent building that sealing the coffre of works that are there, we had in our embassy in Moscow. And when I asked, where did it come from? Because I see so many of these in, in buildings of this period, I was told that it was originally in the baths of Caracalla in Rome. So there, you now have a picture of what they used to put into banks other than money. And this is a magnificent example of a place where people actually did put their money, including my grandmother, in the Bowery Savings Bank. Uh, Jim has mentioned various things that are very flattering. Uh, what you all need is a very conservative father-in-law to put you in your place. When I was appointed to the, be ambassador to France, he was asked by a, a colleague in Indiana, uh, how did your son-in-law get that job? And he said, oh, it was very simple. He went to Harvard and turned left. That at least gives you, brings you down to earth in some ways. Uh, we had many, I started out in the Marshall Plan and I was also involved in the negotiation of the coal and steel community, which later became the European Union, whose flag you have here and whose lovely anthem, stolen from Beethoven, uh, <laughs> is absolutely today something, not six nations, but uh, 27, I think. So much of this none of us could have predicted in those early days. But the beginnings of the French American Foundation, and Ambassador Vimon will understand this, ambassadors both Americans in Paris and Frenchmen in Washington, understand that the relationship can sour like a plague. Overnight, some little incident will come up and you will have people like Monsieur Beauvais in France, and I won't name the ones in this country who started Freedom Fries, but it's, it's something that every ambassador has his fingers crossed about and wonders, you know, when is it going to hit me? In fact, this all started because of our 200th anniversary in 1976. We were the recipients of some absolutely marvelous visits. The tall ships came over, and I sort of have a memory of my wife scampering up the rigging of the German ship in the Baltimore Harbor, and I said, you know, what started you on that? Well, the chief of protocol used to be the commander of one of the America's Cup racers, and I think he encouraged her to have a try on the, on the lines of the German ship. Up the, uh, the Potomac River, the Queen of Denmark came in her tall ship, and she has since become a friend because she visits her husband's vineyard, which is quite close to our house in southwest France. But my biggest hurdle when these fellows came to me and said we want to form this association and what we need is the president to respond positively when President Giscard announces that the French government is going to be behind this and actually put some money into it. And uh, my hurdle was Henry Kissinger. Henry never liked to be surprised particularly by his staff. And the thought that we were discussing something that was going to be put on his plate and get the president's approval without his being the initiator was not to his liking. But somehow or other, we got over that hurdle and the French had an absolutely magnificent evening for us in Washington in which Giscard, another bit of mythology I think, since he claimed to be a descendant of Admiral de Stang, who was the commander of that fleet, uh, 
arrange the tables for this dinner and name them for the ships that were in the French fleet that stood off Yorktown. And without that fleet being there, we would never have won the battle at Yorktown or our independence. So we owe that very much to the French. And it was a very symbolic evening and one that we all appreciated. This foundation has been in existence now for 35 years. Some of its exchangees are here tonight. Uh, it, it requires obviously more than a single foundation to try and what my friend Jim very diplomatically calls misperceptions, but which are lack of understanding on both sides of how the other, the other side really works. And what we've had over the years are a series of programs that don't dwell on the problems, but in fact illustrate much of what we do that has a common root. When you talk about the health system in France, it's something we're vitally interested in these days. When you talk about the American uh, higher education system, it's something that the French are vitally interested in. I can see that as a former president of the board at Harvard, the number of French students who come to us at times when they probably ought to be going into French universities. And I would ask them, well, why aren't you going there? And the answer is because we're not sure we're going to come out with anything that's useful. As an American ambassador in Paris and as assistant secretary, I was envious of the Germans because somehow or other, Jack McCloy and David Rockefeller could produce all of New York at anything that had to do with Germany. And with the help of Douglas Dillon, we would try, but we really needed something like the French American Foundation to give us a platform to discuss some of these common issues. And we're so fortunate tonight to have a leading world industrialist from France to come and talk to us. And I think it really does show how the French American Foundation has succeeded in making a mark for itself. And I congratulate them, wish them luck in the future, and congratulate also my co-honoree this evening. Thank you.